Well, hello, everybody. A new. Well, anyone new here? Anyone uh, has hasn't heard Zen bitch slap or something? Well, it's a simple. Um, I didn't start there. I it was concluded there. The importance of. Um, finding was lost and then that on this wanting to understand and know and experience and to study just got flipped to see what I'm not all the while seeing from what I am it's not like by seeing what you're not you suddenly discover a new state no it's the same old same old state readily available at all times it's just our being that state if we get confused and uh <laughs> identified as the glove we start seeking the hand through the glove yeah all the while being the hand yeah this is a fundamental joke of non-duality and uh you're the butt of it and then you can laugh with it which is beautiful and uh, it happened with me, I, uh, not with me, but it happened that whatever was talking or coming through just basically said, uh, if you don't, you don't have to move from this point because if you do, it's pointless, yeah? Because if you don't see the mental activity, you're gonna be looking from it, really. It's that simple. And then no matter how much you try to specialize your looking and concentrate your looking and get laser like looking and focused and earnest looking that looking isn't going to support the agenda well it is in a way because it's going to fail and when it fails you should be thoroughly convinced yeah because now you gave it a real go and nothing's happened and actually the opposite seemed to happen so it should be clear. It's like so a lot of people, like one of our members here, you know, didn't know that maybe for him, it's not rope for everyone, that he didn't know that uh, going to a Vipassana retreat wouldn't be valuable as, except by going to a Vipassana retreat. Yeah. So he went to the retreat and then he realized he didn't have to go to the retreat. Now, there is a faster way, so you don't sign up for the retreat, but it doesn't matter. The, uh, the end justifies the means. So, yeah. so if you do a lot of stuff and then it fails you, that's six value. Yeah. If you don't do a lot of stuff and you're doubting it, then do a lot of stuff if you're motivated and it will fail you. And then you'll be left high and dry, but you'll be happy about it because finally you'll realize what you were calling your devices, intellect, understanding, you know, getting something, knowing something, having something, experiencing something, uh, they're not your devices, yes? That's the beauty of it. And underlying it, over it, in it, around it, there's that sense, that sense of presence. We were talking about it at the other meet other meaning this morning the sense of presence uh to the mental state implies it's paul yeah now if you see you're not paul that sense of presence will validate itself instead of being used to validate paul it'll validate itself yeah it will be a sense of presence not a sense of self they're both derived from the same uh origin yeah one is an is a an interpretive view which is the sense of presence implies there's a paul the other one is the sense of presence sees that implying there's a paul yeah the implying that the, it, it implies paul happens but one way you start looking from there the other way you look at it yeah so now that which you would love to have a constant remembrance of you have one 
the sense of presence. Yeah. If you're in this moment, uh, it's brought to you by the sense of presence. <laughs> that's the <laughs> that's the sponsor of the show. Yeah, it's the sense of presence. <laughs> so I sort of went this direction, and it seems to have worked over the years. I'm open for other new information. Nothing has come. It's been a long time. Uh, negation is seamless. It never falls back on itself. It never becomes an affirmation. You are the affirmation. It's just negating what you're not. And in some terminology, I use the word self, but I don't have a belief in that. I have a belief in selfing. I think that's what the mental state does. It's an activity that implies a noun. And then when the noun's implied, it's magically put before all activities. So now you're thinking you're doing a lot of stuff <laughs> that you really have nothing to do with <laughs> throughout, throughout the day. So, so uh, I went that path and like in, uh, you know, the uh, casino of the universe, I, when I play roulette, I put my money on the same black square, 38, <laughs> no matter how many rolls or if it starts one way and goes the other way, I just have faith and usually uh, I cash out pretty well. Yeah, yeah. And all the while there's a traveling lighter, which is awesome. I mean, that you can't put value on, it's difficult. Because really, in a way, you know, you come in here with nothing and you leave with nothing. Yes. I, I, I mean, some of the most beautiful things I, I've seen or felt or tasted or touched, I couldn't grab or hold or own. Yeah. Even the taste of something I bought goes away quickly. But wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, I could, you could study Buddhism 101, but it's beautiful when you live and you have that sort of loose understanding, it fortifies itself by recognition, yeah? You see why things are dissatisfying is because they're temporary, yeah? We have a desire for th events that are coming and going to stabilize. That's not their nature. Yeah, I believe what we project and look for in the outside is really a mutated reaction to the inside, not meaning there's an inside, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's the mental way of coming up with what it thinks it would look like. Yeah, and it, then stabilization, I'd be free from all concerns and worries, but that's not possible for an action figure. Yeah. Yeah. So if I can be of help, you know, I hope I'm not. And uh, just it's non-duality, though, please. It's a not it's a not to. So it is it's a negative uh, presentation, really, from the get go. Yeah. It's not like non-Buddhism or non-Judaism or non-Catholicism. It's a very unique uh, view because it's a negation of that which is viewing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's something, it was quite novel when I ran into it. It really, it was like a wrench in the works of the mental logic. It was nice to have, to read a sentence out of a book and have it just, you know, grind the gears so they would stop, yeah? And then you get these uh, sensations of it stopping and yet you're still there. So, you know, the basically the message gets through. That which you believe is you stops quite a lot. <laughs> Something continues. I would say that's more of you than that which stops. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I can't be anywhere else, really. There you, there you go. <laughs> I just. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm happy to see everybody, Susan and Chris, Chris, uh, 
Do you sleep with that hat, Chris? I'm getting concerned with you now. You're concerned? Why are you concerned? Do you sleep with that hat on or what? I want to... No, I do ride my bike with it on, though. Oh, all right. Just, were, just wondering, you know. Yeah. Don't know, you know, I was walking by a hat store like six years ago. And I walked in and I bought this top hat. And then the guy was like, what do you need a top hat for? And I'm like, I don't know. And then I got home and I'm like, I am never going to have any use to wear this hat. But then I started wearing it all the time. And now it's just my hat. <laughs> Which seems to cause, seems to cause lots of comments for people. From yeah, people. There you go. It's yeah. just a hat. Lots of different, lots of different kinds of hats out there. There is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, at least it makes you recognize me every time, so that's good. I do. I recognize <laughs> you. You stand out in the Zoom. Yeah. 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 I stopped. I stopped asking questions because <laughs> I really do realize the futility of it, and uh, every everything that you describe is what's happening to me except except without the, the kind of penny dropping i am going through the whole like switching i keep switching rides and then finding that the result is the same as you said the other day even though while i'm doing it i'm like this isn't going to work <laughs> but i still do it <laughs> and well, uh, it's yeah. not you so that's the good news yeah I, I, without you it runs out of momentum it does yeah, I'm I'm hoping something like that happens because like I keep telling you, I, I, I have I don't feel like I'm looking for something except to not have anxiety all the time. Yes. I don't well, I don't I'm not a seeker or something, I get I don't feel like that, but Yes. But I do well, have that constant feeling of dissatisfactoriness or whatever you like I need to do something, even though I know that I don't need to do anything. Yes. Again, this this uh, it needs to constantly be fed. When it's not, it it dries out. It loses, info, you know, it loses oomph. And the point is, is really uh, the anxiety can be used like anything else to see there's no one who has the anxiety. So it's just a good way to go. So if something is profoundly upsetting. It has a value because it's pointing out there's no you that's profoundly upset. Yeah. I have a hard time trusting that. Well, again, you can ask, well, who is it that has a hard time trusting it? Yeah. You're never going to find Chris. I never find anything. It's true. No, that's right. Because Chris is always here. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, Chris not, is not lost. So you can't find him. <laughs> it's awesome. Really? So you just frustrate the system. That's all. <laughs> well, that's happening. Yeah, that's, that's part of it, really. The system, when it's frustrated, shows its cards pretty well. Yeah. It seems like some people have a higher tolerance for that frustration, I guess, because it's been a long time of this kind of feeling of, like, like I know nothing. I know something, how can I describe this? I know that nothing can be wrong with this. <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing can, nothing can be wrong with it. Everything's good the way it is, but it still feels like something's wrong. Well, yeah, now more will be revealed. Yeah, I've kind of switched. Switch to just listening. <laughs> That's what I said. Good. Listening is good, but more gets revealed usually when you least expect it. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Yeah. Well, I I really do appreciate your talks. Well, yeah. At least uh, whatever conditions there are, there's lightness to be found. Yeah. You can you can travel lighter through whatever is in store for you. You mm. can. Yeah, because our role with whatever is in store for you is so big that even the tiniest little bit of disinterest goes a long way. Yeah, it really does. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, yeah, just keep coming back if you like. And uh, I've, I've watched like a lot of little mental empires rise and fall <laughs> here. I have over the years. <laughs> I swear, I have. It they said like they were going to last forever, and then they <laughs> they passed they, away. Yeah, it seems it seems like some people just just personality wise t tend to travel lighter than other people. Some people just seem to travel really heavy, and I don't know if that's the same as when I'm talking. I'm talking about like personality versus non duality, I guess. And uh, yeah, it some people just seem to travel lighter already without well the, the personalities that travel heavy the tried and true thing is service really because hmm. uh there may be a difficulty breaking out of that gravitational field of the mental activity yes but service has a way of pulling you out it's not That's you getting out it pulls you out pulls the attention away from chris or paul and then Paul and Chris uh, get a whole lot better for it, yeah? That's interesting that you said that because I started a new job about six weeks ago and I was really anxious about it. It's actually a pretty high-level job, but one aspect of it is mentoring young people. I'm an, I'm an artist, and so I spent a lot of years working just as an artist and now switching to essentially being a teacher. Yeah. And I put in an enormous amount of extra i work probably 16 hours a day now all just just mentoring because i see these artists struggling in a way and without the without help like i didn't have help and so i'm just kind of pouring myself into that and it's like i that my anxiety actually started to go down when i started this job which is really strange well no it isn't that's getting out of that orbit see exactly that's the anxiety yeah. and then there's a moon that follows the anxiety to see what condition it is. And it's almost like a little constellation builds all in this mental atmosphere. So you need something, you need like an asteroid to grab that comet tail and get pulled out for a while. It's, yeah. It really reveals a lot, I'm telling you. I, when we come into recovery, we're extreme examples of self self will run riot yes so very absorbed in terminal uniqueness and shit like that and it's uh, it's um it's a necessity in recovery to bring people out of that orbit and service is the key yeah can, so, can i ask ask you a question about that and if it's if it's personal just don't answer but i don't exactly understand the connection in your story i, I have like everyone in my family people that struggled with substance abuse and ended ba very badly. And I basically don't use anything for that reason. I just know, I just avoided it because I feel like I would probably be, <laughs> I would probably have no resistance to it. But what is the connection? I mean, if you, it seems like you, you talk about being struck sober as well as discovering non-duality and were those the same event no no the struck sober happened earlier on 1988 yeah and basically it was just i had given up hope seemingly and uh i spent two years in a program and it did quite well in it and when i left i went back out and it got worse than ever and I entered uh, a state of incomprehensible, pitiful demoralization. Yeah. And basically, I just wanted to stay loaded till I went to jail or institution or death. And then just that a regular day at the office coming out of a blackout in another town other than where I started, uh, something just put an end to that. And I got struck sober and then was introduced to a way of life that night that I wasn't looking for, which was recovery. And then I, uh, the action figure started to align with that way of life. Yes. Hmm. And, uh, 
and a lot of a lot a lot of benefits ensued that i a lot of fortune occurred that i felt i didn't deserve so a lot of gratitude and yeah and i felt uh, i really felt an intimacy with something doing for me what i couldn't do for myself yeah and what is that thing what is that thing? I'll strike, i don't know what it is i just know by its movement you know some yeah. something moves so sort of like what can the sail know about the wind other than it, its effect on it? Yeah. Just, the I'm, sail can only know the wind by its effects on the sail. Can't see the wind. You can't get it. Yeah. So to me, I had a sense of some power because of its effects through me and changing the life I was in. Yeah. I actually had a similar experience, but of hitting rock bottom. Yeah, and I and uh, a lot changed, but not everything. And well, I, it, I wonder is that is it necessary to have that kind of a like I, I got to the anything is necessary. I think it either happens or it doesn't. I don't think there's any necessary. I don't believe uh, we are what I think mind is all big m minds before all of us yes i mean so basically if it wants to reach great heights by reading a phone book it can it doesn't it it can make up whatever yes <laughs> and it has really if you look at it so i don't i'm not into i'm not a believer in necessary but if you need if you really feel like you need to do something you better do it but i have no I don't believe there's any need to do anything across the board. Yeah, I just don't. So, but, were you were you just? I don't. I hope this doesn't sound stupid. Were you just lucky or something? I suspect a lot of people that struggle with alcohol wish they had that. What? what yeah, I would say. Well, I wouldn't say. I first of all, I don't believe there is a me or an I. But there was. I would say grace. I like grace. Yes. Yeah, because I had no idea what it was that I was brought into. I didn't know sobriety. No, <laughs> no, no explanation for it. It just happened. Yeah, I didn't know what happened. It started. I didn't know what was happening. But somehow I left this trailer park, went to a phone booth, called up a, a lady. She decided to help me once again. She drove up an hour and a half to this town calistoga i didn't get loaded in that time i got in her car i tried to talk her into getting some shit and that was like the last hurrah for my addiction really she wouldn't go for it she said if you want to stay at my house tonight which is what i needed she said you got to go to a recovery meeting so she dropped me off at a men's meeting in san francisco picked me back up and that getting whacked in the morning and a way of life was was the combination that was needed yeah or that miracle would have died on a vine in a day or two but because something happened and then i immediately got connected to a way of life that that which happened extended for 34 years now so it's pretty good yeah <laughs> yeah so uh well i'm glad and that, then i'm, I'm glad that it happened <laughs> During that time, the non-duality became apparent. Someone, I got introduced to that. And then, uh, you know, it made sense completely. Not to my head, but some something, something in there. And uh, it took me to some conclusions. And from there, uh, you know, it's been the last answer, basically. Yeah. yeah. So I don't feel any need to have any more answers, which is pretty damn good, really. <laughs> sure, sure is. That, that, and then more you. keeps getting revealed, uh, mostly about what we're not. Yeah, because the revelation of what you are is constant. Yeah. You don't, it's not like you're dry and then you get wet and then you're dry. You're just always wet now. So you don't even know you're wet in a way. Yeah. It's yeah. like the fish has been brought back to the water. Yeah. And after a while, 
at first the water seemed so different because it had this idea of dryness. That idea of dryness is gone. Now the water is just the normal, ordinary. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so Sounds pretty cool. You're always here. You never get gypped, no matter what. Yeah, I started to have, um, my girlfriend is a little ill, not the COVID, like a cold, a flu. So I, I picked it up from her probably. And I've watched every gyration of it. It's been amazing from the first little tickle and then on and on. And it's just been fun. You know, sometimes wow. you feel like something, you know, surprised you, but I've seen it for days. <laughs> so it's just on and it comes and then it inhabits the space. Then it will leave the space. <laughs> so you're, you're enjoying being sick. Okay. I'm not enjoying it, but I mean, <laughs> You do get some minor, uh, low-level hallucinations and some altered states, which ain't bad. Huh. <laughs> okay. Well, thank, thanks again, Paul. Oh, you're welcome. I'm sorry. I'm, for the others, I'm sorry, whatever. It was a nice conversation, Chris. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You too. Yeah. Anyone else? Kelly is being represented by a dog today. The dog, yeah, all right, it's good. Zoe, anyone? Where was uh, Rhoda been? Rhoda's got a, a, a heavy duty tan, so she was somewhere out in the sun. I think it's just the lighting in here today, honestly. I just was noticing that too. I'm thinking, where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. He certainly wasn't in the Northeast with you. How was the trip? The trip was, uh, it's over, which is nice, yeah. <laughs> it was empty it's as like, always. It's like sickness inhabited the space and then it dissolved. It's empty as always, yes. Empty as always. Good, good. It was nice. I met Bill, Bill Churchman. I saw there. Uh, I've met Zoe in the past. I've met Kerry in the past here. Inca. I haven't met a niche yet, but we've met Don O. I haven't. I knew I've met, so it's been nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a very nice trip, actually. Good. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Yeah, yeah. From so, a place you never left. Yeah, exactly. I was. I had a little bit of a hope I was going to come on, and no one was going to. It was sort of forgotten that we were having one. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. it's hang out for a bit. <laughs> I'm, all right. I'm, I'm all right. Yeah. I was having a there's a statement in recovery, sort of like a warning, contempt prior to investigation, yes. So if you really look at the system of selfing, it's a system of I know, yeah? It's not really open to finding out. It has a sense of I know. I've worked with people and they, uh, they would be in some bad condition and I would talk, we would talk and every time I'd say something, they go, I know, I know. And I said, well, you don't know, obviously, because you're all fucked up. So. Come on, you know, so basically the system itself is not very keen on learning. Yes. And it likes to gather information that supports its thesis and shit. And it's it's basically you're never seeing from an even or a, a sound platform. Yes. It's always skewered. Yes. Yes. And so obviously it presents a lot of false evidence with the hopes that it will appear to be real. Yeah. It can't make it real. We are the ones that it make it seem real. Yeah. We're the only reality in town. So false evidence appears real to what? To what's real. Yes. When what's real is taking itself to be really false evidence. I don't think it's what's real is taking, but let's follow it. That this is the idea of being a body is false evidence, truly appearing real. Yeah. 
<laughs> so in that in that state, how are you going to know true from false? Basically, you're you swallow the giant bit of false evidence appearing real. I, obviously, you're probably going to be succumb to the advertising of a lot of other false evidence that that supports the original false evidence. Yeah. How is this going to find the truth? The truth is finding out about it, really. Yeah. The truth is finding out about the system that we're not. You're not going to find truth through the system. Yeah. So that futility is healthy. The futility that you're not going to get it is beautiful because a lot of interest that's getting funneled into these false attempts to get out of what you're not in, are gonna, it's gonna go somewhere else. I found that it enriches the day, yeah? In other words, the attention and interest that could be out going on all these chores are now here enriching the day. Yeah? It's, and instead of enslaving the day to what's not happening, yeah? Beautiful. Could I have done that? No, because if I try to do it, it would be more interest. There would be more interest in the doer of it. Yeah. So the doing would just reinforce the doer. So there's it's a it's a disarming message. It's like a, you're outmatched. You're not going to get it. You're not going to have it. You can't lose it, which is a great quality. And some engines you've never ever experienced being off turn off yeah you had no idea that they could turn off you felt that that was just how things were but it isn't they stop yeah and then you hear the the hum or the generation the generator of the presence yeah you're not hearing echoes from the past and siren calls from from the future yes you're freed from that then you're always here. You never get gypped. You're here if it's a temple or if it's the car. It doesn't matter. You're here. What more do you want, really? You want a mythical here? You want a magnificent here with parades and, sh you know? I love dog shit awareness. I love the ordinariness of freedom because it doesn't, it doesn't look desirous to the mental state, which is awesome. Yeah. It doesn't. The desire, the mental state doesn't have much interest in non-duality. It really doesn't because it can't make anything out of it really. Yeah. I mean, who's going to write a blog about my journey on, of non-duality? There's no journey. How could you have day one of my journey to non dwell? <laughs> it would, <laughs> you would fin, you would write about a sentence and then ah shit, you know, just forget it. You just drop it. There goes your planned blog for your long journey. It would just lose interest. <laughs> you would, <laughs> you know what I mean. All right, this is the gear I've amassed for my long journey of non-duality. Nothing. <laughs> I may be sitting a lot, some so loose yoga pants. Not to do yoga, but just sit comfortably at these zooms. <laughs> What's the mountain that you climb, satsang? <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, I just sat in satsang. A lot got revealed. What? Oh, yeah. Did you combine it with hypersonic breathing or whatever? No, I just sat here and the obviousness became obvious. Pretty good. Blue started to appear as blue and red got to be red. Yes. <laughs> Not here became clear. Here became clearer. I started to see not here from here instead of looking for here from not here. It's just, it's just simple, very simple. Eh? Just the moving. There's not just monumental plate tectonics being moved. There's slight little movements of, <laughs> of emphasis, really. Yeah. 
Instead of the emphasis on this one thing, the emphasis moves to something else. And then you see completely differently. What? Yet you could never have come up with that. You never could have because trying to come up with it was that old position, which is only going to reinforce the old position. When you just freaking, there's a, like a whatever, or just a surrender or whatever, then you moved and then you see a new, yeah? And of course you didn't do it, so you're not gonna undo it. See, this is the dilemma with believing you can achieve something. If there's a belief you can achieve something, it's coincided with the belief you can lose something. And I bet you, you're gonna be, the more realistic aspect of it is you feel you've lost something <laughs> than achieving it, yeah? I mean, it's not gonna be a clean ratio. It's gonna be a lot of feeling you blew it and a little bit of a feeling great about achieving it. <laughs> so this is what you're freed from. This is what you're freed from. You're freed from the need to be liberated. Yeah. My number one news feed isn't news from the liberated front. No. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> when tells when someone tells me they're liberated, I feel a little suspicious. <laughs> it's like when they tell me they've disappeared. Who is there to inform them of that? I don't know. <laughs> See? I mean when, it, when you disappear, there's not a missing person notice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, you, just, you just disappear. <laughs> I don't know, man. I could be completely wrong, but I could care less about that, too. I could care less, really. <laughs> If something says when I get to heaven's door, you really blew it, what the hell, you know? <laughs> I'm sure I'll get another opportunity. <laughs> At least I've been traveling lighter this whole time. <laughs> you really blew it, Paul. Well, that's all right. It was, it was nice traveling. <laughs> So I don't know. I find the greatest joy I see is watching people that have an extreme case of earnestness and seriousness and to see some of that drop. I know they're feeling a lot better. <laughs> I do. I just can tell. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right, Billy. You can come off of that big hook. You can come down <laughs> off the cross. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The show's over. Come down. Become one of the ordinary folk. Not the special one who's chosen. Just the ordinary character. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So, yes. I truly believe non-duality is the last answer because it's a uh, it's an answer before there was uh, a question yes it's quite beautiful and it's seamless yeah hmm. you, you know it's based on you are what you're looking for how hard is that to understand yeah now just see it's not the image that you see as you yeah you are what you're looking for the seeker and the sort is over and now it's the seeker is the sort yeah end of story end of journey being ourselves reality the greatest mystery is reality wanting to attain reality from the lips of ramana mahashi yeah I think it's pretty direct, yeah? You're it. <laughs> and why isn't that seemingly obvious? There must be some activities going on, yeah? Obviously, yes? There's got to be some activities that 
while they're going on, something that isn't so appears to be so, yeah? So the dreaming now takes itself to be the dreamt. And now it's dreaming of not being the dreamt. All the while, not being the dreamt. <laughs> <laughs> so Paul yes it's like um, yeah the earnestness I, I, I went to a yoga retreat recently and, and there there were all these signs all over the place and one was at the front door and it said you know relax breathe observe and I was just like that's too much work. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. All that, yeah. It's um. Well, now you have to be in a posture before you take a posture, <laughs> and then there'll be a posture before that posture. <laughs> it's never ending. Yeah, yeah. It's it's amazing. It's uh, but it's like the the noticing uh, what you're just saying that that it's like noticing that all of a sudden it was like, Oh, you know, I used to really go, Oh, I have to relax now <laughs> and breathe and observe. And then it's like, Oh, it's some, some switch has just shifted. And it's like, no, that, you know, it's. No, what would be cool is if you walked in those rooms backward <laughs> and then you saw it like the rear view mirror, relax, focus whatever and then you find yourself already in that state yeah instead of going this way where it's all right you would actually back you walk backwards and you would see oh these are already states yeah yeah Go on. yeah 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 but yeah that's the same thing with recovery here when you first come in you read something like uh, you will cease fighting everyone or anything. That's a huge order. But really, it, they're describing an effect that happens after you've been under the influence of this higher power, that you'll be in a state of not fighting everyone or anything. When you hear it from a, the, the mental state, you think it's another freaking order. How am I going to complete that mission, not fighting everyone and everything? But it's not a call to arms. It's an effect. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of relax as an order, see it from the rear view mirror. Yeah. So then that state that they want you to be in, you're proclaiming you already are in. Yes. Yes. But then yeah, again, that, that was it. It was just like rec recognizing there's nothing. It's already that way. There's, there's no doing to, to get into relax, breathe, and observe. It's like, that's, yeah, yeah, just what you said. But see, the thing is, they, it's got to be put off because that's a business plan. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you already are the product, it's hard to sell it to you. <laughs> it is, really. Yeah. yeah. That's why you're not seeing, you know... Uh, <laughs> Temples of non-duality. <laughs> you, don't, you don't, do you? Oh, here's the cathedral of non-duality. They started building it and they lost interest. They never, it rivals Notre Dame. No, it never happened. Because you'd get, you would get, you'd lose interest in it. <laughs> Oh, we're entering the Keith, the cathedral of lifelong non-duality. <laughs> it's funny, you know. <laughs> Somebody, something has to convince you that you don't have something or you aren't something to sell you how to have it. Yes, it's yeah. just not nothing right or wrong with it, but it promotes time and increase whatever and more demands and it just on and on it's nice in a way if it's about you know uh 
breeding horses or something. But when it comes to the goal is you're finally going to end up truly being yourself, that's already been met. Yeah. So, yeah, you can you cannot not be your, this, you know. So there you So then you can travel lighter through it. And then if you want to take a break, you can. Yeah. I cannot break this 28 hour concentration. Sure, you can. <laughs> With always the hope that, yeah, it's going to get me somewhere. And that just is, um, yeah, it's like, well, <laughs> well yeah, it's that thing. Where to go? <laughs> it's the carrot. It's the carrot before the donkey, you know, the horse. Yeah, the donkey. <laughs> and you keep going. Yeah. Oh. You get old, though. That's the thing. I mean, uh, yeah, I found personally my spiritual yearnings were was filling a void of lack of contentment and satisfaction, really. Oh, completely. Yeah, when you were speaking earlier today about it's like after getting sober that there was still that the, the problem was the bondage of self. It, it, there was still... It was still yeah. all this mass of fear and, you know, whatever, just still there. And then it's like, I've got to do something. And then, then hearing this message, <laughs> no, I, there, I didn't do the stuff before. I'm not doing the stuff now. It, it just levels See, it the playing field. Yeah. When you've got to do something, there's always something to do. You know, it's gonna keep going. It's like a, it's like a, a slinky, it's a momentum. Yeah. When you stop, which you can't do, but you can be stopped. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things just dry up, and that attention and interest uh, is is sort of put in the bank of today. Yeah. And you accrue credit and value from it. I mean, you really taste food, you hear, you touch, you smell. You're much more alive in a way, just through the gates of the conscious contact. Yeah. Just because all the attention and interest isn't going everywhere else. It's sort of resting. And to me, that's what presence is, is, is the source of interest and attention, really. It's resting in its source, you know? So, yeah. See, I'm not interested in presence. When the interest in presence is there, there's no difference between presence and the interest. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's just presence. It's not interest in presence. Yeah. It's just presence. I would say interest and attention is of presence, yeah. And the head would like to direct that interest and attention to what's not happening quite a lot. Past, future, yes, this and that. So, uh, but if, if the attention and interest gets unchained, it always goes back to the source, to presence, yeah? yeah. And then I find that's the most enriching quality is when it's here now like hearing the chimes, everything like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, and it's, it's like, you know, before when I used to plan trips and stuff, it was always like, oh, now I have to come back home or whatever. And now it's just like, it's, it's all um, amazing. <laughs> and then it's just you know, going on a trip or being at home, whatever. All yeah. Of it. Yeah. 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 Because you are here. Yeah. The statement you are here is obvious, but the, the sense or the experience of you are here is quite different. Yeah. 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 It's, it's rewarding in and of itself, but you don't build up an account. It comes and goes. Yeah, yeah. You're really a beggar at all the time, but very rich each moment. Yeah? yeah. But in the ultimate, you're a beggar, but every moment you're very rich. Yeah, it's cool. 
Yeah. Yeah, you can't put it anywhere. You can't grab it and hold it or acquire it. Yeah. I think we say in AA, you really have it by giving it away. Yeah. So what is that? You give your the attention, you don't, but the attention goes to the hummingbird. The attention goes to the chimes. The attention goes to Amelia. The attention goes to the cat. The attention goes to the dog. The attention goes. Yes, 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 yes. And in that, uh, you have it by, yes, yeah. So, yeah, it's nice to see you, Zoe. It was so good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Anyone else there? Who's um, a road is running the show? Rhoda? Pretending to, at least. I'm pretending to. No one, no one's raised a hand. We got about seven minutes left. Okay. All right. Well, the seven trials of the non dual fire. <laughs> They may all look the same, but they're different. So here's the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one. You've been through the seven rings of fire of non-duality. Now we have six and a half minutes left. Didn't take long, did it? No. Inca raised her hand for a second. Who? Inca. Oh, Inca. Inca knows better. Inca knows better than to ask me a question. That's I good. Do have, I do have a question, Paul. I right. was um, I was within two and a half hours, three hours, um, away from your East Coast trip, and um, and I was kind of contemplating. Um, getting to one of the meetings and then got totally confused about it. It looked to me like it was all recovery. And my question is, is yeah. it not, if, would a recovery meeting be just as beneficial as this meeting or non, or, or non, non beneficial? Yeah. It is. I, I'm just wondering what the connection between the two or the difference between the two. Well, the difference or the similarities is what we make of it, yeah. Okay. But uh, the recovery, it was so framed in recovery. So I went back to the first place I started. I'd been going there for years, you know, twice a year. And they're a big recovery center. So we wanted to keep it in... Uh, in the ballpark of recovery and the 12 steps and stuff. And then the other two were non-duality type meetings. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, but I would, anyone could come. The only one people couldn't come was Friday because it was only for residents of this, of the facility. The first one I did. So they wanted that to be just people that lived in this place. So, yeah. So I had to f go by, you know, I follow their rules and yeah, but I don't see much difference really. It's not really the topic that's said, it's the gathering and the energy. Yeah. And the energy doesn't have a little, you know, made in non-duality or made in recovery on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, it's the same source, I'd say. But yeah, and some people like uh, the recovery thing more than the non-duality. And some people like the non-duality more than recovery. So, yeah, yeah, but no, anytime, Inka. Yeah. I think we're gonna put some of them up. I have videoed them. I just haven't put them up yet. Some of the ones we did over this trip. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Or was, we can just say I'll have some long goodbyes today. Yeah. Anu, there she is. Always nice to see Anu. 
Bill, Bill C, pleasure. We've got Sherry, Sherry. We've been blessed with Sherry's presence for a while now, a couple of weeks, very nice. Don O, probably not gonna sign up for a retreat soon. That was pretty good. Chris, always a pleasure, Chris. Yeah, I have a, I can feel simpatico with you, bro. I understand the head, you know, the head, uh, yeah. Some people have like an amplification of the volume. Yeah, a lot of addicts do. Yeah, so they'll do almost anything if they could try to turn it down or, or distract themselves from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm addicted to something. I just don't know what it is. <clears throat> well, you're not, but there's the head, the, you know, the head truly, the mental state uh, demonstrates a lot of addictive qualities. So it's in its nature. I would say the the big addiction is the mental state's addiction to being the doer, the thinker, the feeler. And it's gone so far as to image the body as that, the doer. So we're actually trying to get relief as the drug that we're, the head's addicted to. <laughs> Talk about being outmatched. I would... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paul. <laughs> See, the beautiful thing is the greatest door out is hopelessness, truly. <laughs> to admit that you're completely outmatched uh, gives you the eyes to see a very big, big door. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Paul. Oh, yeah. The addictive, see how much, you know, the 12 steps have been proven to be quite good for a way of life for addicts and stuff. And there's like a hundred different conditions that use the 12 steps, like Gamblers Anonymous, Overeaters, Sex and Love, tons, yeah? So you have to see all that addiction's got to be have a source, yeah? Not S-A-U-C-E or whatever, but S-O-U-R-C-E, a sauce, not a marinara sauce. A sauce where I would say the source of it is addictive, yes? The mental state. And I would say its obsession with self is a true addiction. It's not you obsessed with self. I hate that we keep identifying ourselves as a mental activity. But the mental activity is addicted or obsessed with self. Yeah. That's the image, yes. But the, what the image implies, which is the doership, the thinker, the feeler, all that. Yeah. All that owning is represented as this body image. So there's that act of being identified as it is an addiction, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank God it's not you. You're not the one who's addicted. That's where they see, this is why a lot of people don't want to see the truth. They think it's going to be more blame involved. Yeah. And it's another thing I really rather not know that I'm doing, like separating from God or something like that. Who wants to hear that stuff? That's too much. Yeah. My girlfriend said I wasn't nice to the dog today. That's more than enough. Tell me you're separated, you separated from God. Give me, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. So, no, you didn't do anything. Yeah. It's, it's just an addictiveness running wild. Yeah. And all the attempts to get uh, relief from it turn into addictions themselves for some people. Yeah. yeah. I did not do, I did drugs to get out of something, really. Yeah, I wanted relief from something that was seemingly inhabiting me. And it seemed like a pretty fast way to change feelings and and conditions by doing drugs. Yeah. And then I had no idea that the, the original addiction was getting reinforced by my solution to it. <laughs> or 
the head solution to it. Yeah, well, I do now. I've never not seen that. Yeah. Once it was revealed, I've never not seen it now. So, all right. Thanks, everyone. That's it, I think, Rode. Let's say hello to <laughs> Inga. I knew I was saying hello, then I got into a riff here. Chris, yeah. Kelly, we got, uh, yes, yeah, she is Rhoda, Anish. We got uh, Gochi's, Gochi's phone. I, if I blew it, forgive me. I can't see these small letters. Ann B. I know Ann. Uh, we've got Michael, Leanne, some phone numbers. Suze K., my latte lady. Uh, donate here is once again here. Never shares, only takes. Uh, yeah, that's it. Nice, nice to see everyone. We'll be around. Any interest in uh, the events or the Zooms, just look at Zen Slap events. All of them should be up. And uh, we're going to do a live one July 24th in Sebastopol on a Sunday at someone's house. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon, I hope. Take care, bro. Everyone. Bye.